All right, lads, this is a follow-up to the relativity of simultaneity principle. So the, the standard example that's given is that suppose you have an observer C and an, and an observer D on a moving train. The C observer is stationary. The moving train intersects with the stationary midpoint of the observer C. And at the exact moment that happens, there's a simultaneous lightning strikes at points A and B that are not attached to the train. And from the moving observer's point of view, because he's moving towards B, he's going to perceive that the lightning strike B occurred first and the delay from the lightning strike from A to catch up to the midpoint of the moving observer will be different from the uh, physical location of the observer C at his midpoint, right? So they're saying that because of the perceived difference in the simultaneous event, that therefore in physical reality, these two lightning strikes did not occur simultaneous. Okay? Even though the stationary observer registers them as simultaneous due to the principle of relativity of simultaneity, these two coordinate systems regarding time are not connected to one another. This coordinate, the time defined for the stationary observer is called coordinate time, and they say that this time is arbitrary. And the moving train observer has what's called proper time. His time will be different as a function of the square of his velocity over c squared. So what they're saying is that time is not connected between these two, right? And the perceived event will happen, will occur in a different order than for the stationary observer. Now, this is an apparent effect. In reality, lightning stroke, lightning striked, stroked or striked, who knows? Lightning striked both of these uh, A and B points at the same time for the uh, stationary observer, and that's the event that occurred in reality, right? Now, the perceived motion of the train, or I'm sorry, the observer on the train who's moving perceives the events occurring differently, but that doesn't change the fact that the event actually happened um, in reality simultaneously. Now here we have Einstein breaking down clarification on this because some people will say, well, no, it's just the apparent effect, but you know the event actually occurred simultaneously. No, no, that's not what Big Ein said. So here we're gonna read off what Einstein says and then we're gonna get into a variant of the train explanation that's a little more simple to follow. And it doesn't leave any wiggle room for the uh, for the midpoint argument, for the for the time that it would take for the information to go to the moving platform. Or, I mean, to the moving observer. They're saying that you know due to that delay, you know you would be you would be physically in a different position. Therefore, the event wasn't simultaneous. But oh, and then how could we ever know? Okay, well, let's read from Einstein, and then we'll get to the new example. Our two events, like two strokes of lightning. A and B, which are simultaneous with reference to the railway embankment, also simultaneous relatively to the train. We shall show directly that the answer must be in the negative. When we say that lightning strikes A and B are simultaneous with respect to the embankment, we mean that the rays of light emitted at the places A and B where lightning strike occur meet each other at the midpoint of the length of A to B of the embankment. But the events... A and B also correspond to the positions A and B on the train. Let M1 be the midpoint of the distance between A and B on the traveling train. Just when the lightning flashes, as judged from the embankment, the lightning occurs. This midpoint M1 naturally coincides with the midpoint M, but, but it moves towards the right in the diagram in the velocity where with the velocity of the train. If an observer sitting in position M1 in the train did not possess this velocity, then he would remain permanently at M1, and the light rays emitted by the flashing lights A and B would reach him simultaneously, i.e., they, they would meet just where he was situated. Now, in reality, consider the reference to the railway embankment. He is hastening towards the beam of light coming from B, whilst he is riding ahead of the beam coming from A. Hence, the observer will see the beam of light emitted from B earlier than he would see um, it from emitted from A. Observers who take the railway train as their reference body must therefore come to the conclusion that the lightning flash B took place earlier than lightning flash A. We thus arrive at this important result. 
events which are simultaneous with the reference to the embankment are not simultaneous with respect to the train and vice versa, i.e. relativity of simultaneity. Every reference body, defined by a coordinate system, has its own particular time, unless we are told that the re- or unless we are told the reference body to which the statement of time refers, there is no meaning in the statement of time in the event. Okay. So the example given here with the lightning strikes and the bomb reaching the midpoint, sure, sure. There's a there's an apparent effect which you would not perceive the event as being simultaneous. But did the event occur in reality simultaneously? for both observers, regardless of the apparent effect. Now, when you get into the bomb situation in the train, they can argue that the, mid- the midpoint difference, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Touche. Let's take another example, right? So here we have balls A and B, and they're being held by a platform that will release it, that will uh, drop out from under A and B at the same time. When... When observers, when the moving observer and the stationary observer intersect, stationary and the stationary observer will see these two balls A and B fall, and they'll hit a balance beam um, at points A1 and points B1 at the same time. Now, what will happen when these balls hit the ground or hit the balance beam? They're going to hit the balance beam at the same time, and it's not going to cause any tilting or deviation in the balance beam, and they're going to bounce back up a little bit and then, you know, go off to the side or whatever. Not important what they do after they hit the the balance beam, but, you know, they're going to hit this at the same time, and they're both going to equally bounce back. Now, in the moving frame, relativity would say that the B ball would hit first, which would cause a deviation in the landing. So what they're what they would be putting forward is that this would happen. So these get released at the same time and that they're they're at the same level. I just moved it to be simple for the motion down. So here they're coming down, they're coming down. Now they're going to say that B1 hits first and it's going to cause a deviation and then the balls are going to go, you know, in different directions because of that. But in reality, these balls hit, they're going to bounce back up for the stationary observer and or the moving observer, regardless of his, of the perceived B hitting first, right? Now, how could the stationary obs- or how could the moving observer ever confirm this? Well, as he's moving away, he can look back and see the result of the balls bouncing up together at the same time. And we also have the stationary observer here who confirms the simultaneous event. So, in reality, regardless of velocity, all events occur simultaneously. And this is further backed up by GPS, and we'll read a little bit of that, how GPS operations work. Very important. My... One second. Ah, here we go. All right. Let's see on the principle of simultaneity. All right. So... We're all, we were all familiar with the lightning strike example that was just given. We're going to retouch on that because it turns out that GPS is a walking test of relativity of simultaneity versus absolute simultaneity. So we'll go ahead and read here from Wang's analysis from 2000 on reexamining the two principles of special relativity with the Sagnac effect using GPS range measurement equation. All right. So global simultaneity versus relativity of simultaneity. Now, the reason that this is dubbed global simultaneity is because relative simultaneity is not present here on Earth in the ECEF frame, in the in the lab frame, right? So they say, okay, well, events here on Earth are all simultaneous, but outside of this reference frame, that's where you're going to get into relativity of simultaneity. All right, let's continue. In any debate about the speed of light, the problem of simultaneity is always the focus. Special relativity claims relativity of simultaneity, which states that two events occurring at two different places which are perceived as simultaneous for one observer in a system usually will not be simultaneous if viewed from an observer from another system. But, contrary to this, simultaneity is key to GPS operations. GPS is a timing ranging system. It does not measure distances between places where two events, like like signals transmitting and receiving occur. It measures the difference 
of the two instances when these two events occur or happen, and then the distance is calculated using the range measurement equation. GPS, especially its space segment, control segment, oh, space and control segment, make a huge effort to establish and maintain GPS time or simply GPS system time. In the scope where GPS is applied roughly of, an, of a diameter of 50,000 kilometers or bigger, if one is using GPS, one is using GPS time and therefore the concept of simultaneity of GPS. So the global simultaneity that just magically works here on Earth and violates the postulates of special relativity, but in a different reference frame, just trust us, it, it definitely works. Two events happen at two different places, given by a coordinate system X1 and a coordinate system X2, are simultaneous if the time in coordinate system 1 is equal to the time in coordinate system 2. This is true no matter who the observer slash receiver is, where the receiver is, what its status is, or what speed it is. This is the basic operational principle of GPS. We call it global simultaneity instead of relativity of simultaneity. <laughs> In the books of special relativity, the most commonly cited example about relativity of simultaneity is the example about the railway platform and the moving train. It says that two events, like two strokes of lightning, A and B, which are simultaneous with the reference to the platform, are not simultaneous with respect to the moving train and vice versa. But GPS receivers have been utilized extensively on railway platforms and moving trains, and lightning at two different places, A and B, conceptually, is the same as GPS emission signals from two satellites or two DGPS stations. In fact, if two signals are emitted from two satellites or two GPS, two, GP, two D GPS stations at the same time, both GPS receivers on the railway platform and the GPS receiver on the moving train would acknowledge the two events, the emission signals, to be simultaneous. Without this basic acknowledgement, the GPS receivers cannot function at all. So, there, there's a special case now where on Earth, Simultaneity, there's absolute simultaneity. That's what the, that's what global simultaneity means, guys. Instead of using absolute simultaneity, they say global simultaneity. Completely refuting relativity of simultaneity. And here, just to hammer it home, we'll read about All right, so here we have Carol Alley from 1997, who had just done a who just who had just done an experiment with atomic clocks and got them to maintain Einstein synchronization for about 16 hours before they went out of sync. And he says here that it, I think it is appropriate to realize that the first practical application. Oh, let me make this bigger. Mm that the first practical application of Einstein's ideas in actual engineering situations are with us. In fact, that the clocks are now so stable that one must have taken into account these small effects of the variety of systems that are now undergoing development or actually, or are actually used in comparing time worldwide. It is no longer a matter of scientific interest or scientific application, but it has moved into the realm of engineering necessity. Ooh, according to relativity theory, a moving clock appears to run slow with respect to a similar clock at rest. This is called time dilation. Yeah. So also, a moving clock will experience retardation proportional to its velocity. This is called the Sagnac effect. And this is what's actually measured with atomic clocks. But anyway, we'll continue. So this was in 1979 from Professor, Professor Carol Alley, boasting that relativity is now in the realm of engineering as a necessity. Here's also Carol Alley, 19, 17 years later, in an engineering overview regarding GPS and why the relativistic effects are not included and everything is just derived from the Sagnac effect, which is a classical effect, a classical first order effect, mind you, not a second order relativistic effect of time dilation due to temporal divergence because there's no absolute time or space. Um, so here we have Carol Alley and what he says is, and if one perhaps does the explicit recognition of special relativistic effects, I mean, it took a long time to get general relativity down properly, but I think that it is more or less correct now. 
but in absence of any explicit acknowledgement of the special relativistic effects due to the speed of light being the same whenever measured by an observer, leading to the relativity of simultaneity in the associated Lorentz transformation physics, there is nothing of that modeled in the current system, and I think there should be. Thank you. He's pleading for Lorentz transformations to be implemented in GPS, and they don't do that at all. In fact, they use Galilean relativity transformations, which are with respect to absolute time and space. So we have here T prime equals T. The events are, meaning that the events are simultane, simultane, uh, simultaneous regardless of the velocity of the observer. So the example given by Wang is fully supported by GPS's use of absolute time and space between the ECI reference frame and the ECEF reference frame. If GPS didn't acknowledge absolute time and space, the system wouldn't work, or save it would work, but they would have to include the Lorentz transformations and specifically relativity of simultaneity um, to account for the distance discrepancies and the delays in which the receivers would be uh, would receive their signals. But that's not what happens at all. The observers receive uh, the observers receive the information with a delay proportional to their velocity at the same time that the stationary observers do with no delay because it's just like any other wave. I'm um, sorry, electromagnetic propagation is just like any other wave. So you apply this to acoustics. Nobody argues that acoustics um, have, a, have a fixed speed and they propagate you know, irrespective of the uh, moving observer. It's not the observer measures the velocity proportional to his. So that's it for the principle of relativity of simultaneity. It is false and it is explicitly not accounted for as an, as an engineering necessity in GPS. All the corrections used in GPS are derivable from the Sagnac effect, which is a classical first order effect that states that the speed of light will be measured as C plus or minus V, and the V will be the velocity of the observer going with or against the, the light. All right, thank you for that, and tune in. stay tuned for more relativity stuff.